Hi everyone, it's John. It is Friday, April 1st, 2021. Uh, I promise you, no April Fool's jokes. But I did want to post a video this Friday, and it's not a Friday Reads either, like it was last Friday, because I am still reading the exact same books as I was last Friday, and will be this weekend. But I did want to go into a little bit of detail about uh, one particular book that I showed you and give you some background on it and some information about how I discovered it. And I think uh, maybe for a small, well, maybe not so small, subset of my viewership, they'll sort of dig into the goodness that is what I'm going to talk about. I want to tell you about my favorite podcast of all time. Um, this book, like I said, I showed last Friday, is um, a distillation of that podcast. Basically, the many of the episodes in book form, as you can tell on the top there, it says A History of Philosophy Without Any Gaps, which is the name of the podcast. It is affectionately referred to as Hopwag, um, H-O-P-W-A-G, which is, you can tell, the anagram. And this is the volume on medieval philosophy, and it's written by Peter Adamson. So, um, this is one of five volumes that he has so far. Uh, Peter Adamson runs and uh, presents the, uh, the podcast called uh, History of Philosophy Without Any Gaps, which you can find at historyofphilosophy.net, and I will leave a link to that below. For anyone who's interested in philosophy of almost any era. He hasn't covered everything yet. But this has been a now an 11 or 12 year passion project for Peter Adamson. Uh, Peter Adamson, for those who might not be familiar with his name, he is currently a professor of late antiquity and the Islamic world at Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich. And he's also a professor of ancient and medieval philosophy at King's College London. His, uh, in particular, his two areas of uh, scholarly expertise are in the Islamic thinkers uh, who go by the names Averroes and Avicenna, who are two, uh, two thinkers associated with sort of the, the burgeoning of, of Islamic thought in the Middle East and Near East. But um, you don't have to like, uh, strictly speaking, uh, Islamic philosophy to like this podcast. He does have some stuff on that, but um, he starts at where you would think most philosophy, um, history of philosophy classes or presentations um, would start, which is at the very beginning with the Greeks. And he has... Uh, just to take that for example, he has uh, 51 podcasts. His first 51 podcasts are all devoted to classical Greek philosophy. They're, they're broken up into the pre-Socratics, the Socratics, and Plato, and then Aristotle. But the wonderful thing is the without any gaps part. Um, it's really my favorite part of the whole podcast because anyone can tell you about Aristotle. Anyone can tell you about Plato's Republic. And anyone can give a lecture on, you know, one or two pre-Socratics and a couple of the fragments that, were, that we have handed down from them and an interpretation of them. Peter Adamson gives you really fully detailed and I'm talking, uh, his podcasts run on the order of 20 to 25 minutes apiece. 20 to 25 minute podcasts on figures that you normally don't know that much about, whose names you might have heard of, but whose ideas you almost certainly could not talk for five minutes, certainly not 20 or 25 minutes about. And I'll just give you um, a quick, quick example. The first 14 of those 51 podcasts 
uh, are dedicated to, to the pre-Socratics. Again, you can see all of this uh, at the uh, historyofphilosophy.net link I'll leave below. Um, so he goes over pretty much any uh, pre-Socratic philosopher uh, that you may have heard of. Instead of getting just a general exposure and, you know, having it, you know, climax with the appearance of Socrates, which is, of course, what everyone is looking forward to, right? He considers the arguments of the pre-Socratics in their own right and on their own terms. Um, talks about Thales of Miletus, which is, you know, often considered the first uh, philosopher. But he goes on and talks about uh, Anaximander, uh, Anaximenes, Xenophanes, Pythagoras, Heraclitus, Parmenides, uh, Zeno, Anaxagoras, Empedocles, uh, Hippocrates, and then he ends with the Sophists. Um, how many people can tell you much of anything about Anaxagoras? Um, I, I know I couldn't before I listened to the episode. And that's what I mean by without any gaps. He really digs into each historical epic that he's covering and uh, finds these... Uh, I mean, I don't think anyone that he's listed here is particularly considered forgotten. Uh, I recognize all the names that I listed. Uh, now, how many could I tell you about other than maybe two or three of them? Not much before I listen to these. But there are many, many uh, podcasts in here. You only have to go to the one on medieval philosophy. I'll just jump to that one. He ended this not too long ago. Um, an entire episode on, uh, for example, logic in the 14th century. An entire episode on Marsilius of Padua. An entire episode on uh, Jean Gerson. Uh, an entire episode on Peter Olivi. Another one on, on Bonaventure. Of course, Bonaventure is a, a huge name, but <laughs> the other ones weren't nearly as big. My point is that he really, really takes the time to dig into these names that we may not be familiar with, even though we think that we're, we're familiar with a time period. He'll, he'll give you new texts, new names, and what's even more interesting, new secondary sources to read about them in. Um, a lot of these people, I think, may not have had recent... Um, English translations, of course, you know, sp specifically with your medieval writers, we're going to be talking about texts that are almost exclusively written in Latin. You know, I don't know if you can find, you know, the, uh, the uh, English translations of the, the text of Peter Olivi anywhere, but maybe online. Um, they would probably be pretty expensive if you could get a hard copy of them, but they're here. And the texts are not here, but he can, t he can tell you about them. He can tell you about, you know, all the research he did. He, lives, he leaves extensive reading lists with each podcast if you want to do continued research. And the wonderful thing about it is that at 20 or 25 minutes, you're not tied to, you're not overly invested in any one person. Uh, the thing about podcasts that are an hour, an hour and a half long is sometimes with people with a short, shorter attention spans, they can be a little bit trying. Uh, that's not the case here. Uh, they are jam-packed full of information, as you might guess, because he does his homework every single week. Uh, that's how long, that's how often they're released, by the way, every single... <clears throat> here in the States, uh, for me... It is late Saturday night when they're released. Um, he's in Munich, so I think for him it would be very early Sunday morning when he releases them. But um, I stay up late Saturday night 
waiting for each one. Uh, the biggest dork in the world. But um, I just wanted to share this with you. And um, I have been nerding out on this stuff for a couple of years now, two or three years that I've known about him. And my, I mean, I have a, a, a relatively, you know, sound knowledge of a lot of Greek, Roman, and Hellenistic thought, but um, I'm thinking about picking up his, his volumes uh, on those subjects, but I, something I've always had a really sketchy familiarity with. Unfortunately, and this goes back to the gaps that I want to talk about one more time before I wrap things up, is this medieval philosophy. I, last year I ordered 10 or 15 books, and uh, this was one that I requested from Oxford, and they were so kind as to send it. And I will, if by any chance Oxford University Press is actually watching this, I promise I will review it soon. Um, but I'm still only on about page 50 of about 500. So <clears throat> I said I wanted to mention something about gaps. If anyone has taken a class in a... I don't know if this is this, the same way in Europe or anywhere else in the world. But if you take a class, say Philosophy 101, or whatever an equivalent would be anywhere in the United States, you start with, maybe if you're lucky, a lecture on the pre-Socratics, and then you jump into Socrates, <clears throat> and via, of course, you know Plato and, and maybe Xenophanes if you're lucky, lucky, and then Aristotle, and then it's like nothing ever happened between Aristotle and, for me, I think it was uh, Descartes, okay? <laughs> Aristotle lived in 4th fourth, fourth century Athens, 4th century BC Athens, Descartes born in 16th century um, France. That is a gap of almost exactly two millennia of thought that is completely alighted from almost every single philosophy undergraduate degree that you can think of. Um, now, it's not to say that you never see a class in medieval philosophy. You never see mentions to Thomas Aquinas or Bonaventure or... Um, Augustine or, or other people like that. But it's a very sort of unsystematic smattering of super important names in that 2,000-year span. Peter Adamson, he, he takes that entire period and sort of does a global approach mixed with a chronological approach. Um, so I've already told you he does a... Um, a medieval uh, section, which consists of many of its own podcasts. Uh, his Islamic philosophy section also is in that missing time gap, too. Um, he, I think, is interested in eventually doing a series on Chinese thought, uh, which will be fascinating. Um, but he's already also done a series um, on Indian thought, the, the history of... Uh, of uh, intellectual history of India and its philosophical traditions. Right now, he's doing two uh, themes concurrently. He switches back and forth between two topics. So he's adding to two sort of lists at the same time. Uh, one of them is on the, the historical, um, social... Uh, philosophical, cultural aspects of the African diaspora and all of the thought that is associated with it. Um, it is, it's a big project. He's doing it with a professor by the name of Chike Jeffers who teaches in Canada at a school uh, called Dalhousie University. And they are working in coordination um, on the uh, a philosophy of the, uh, of the African diaspora. And then he's also just wrapped up his, his podcasts on Renaissance philosophy. 
and has queued up sort of a syllabus on uh, the next 20 or 30 episodes that he wants to do, which is on the thought of uh, big thinkers of the Reformation. So we're finally kind of into the 16th century. Um, I don't know when we're going to be getting to people like Kant or Hegel or, I mean, you know, God forbid the 20th century. It might be another five or ten years, but um, he'll make it. And when he gets there, it will be as fascinating as anything else he's ever done. Um, but I wanted to share this with you. Um, it is something I think a lot of people who listen to my videos might be interested in. Let me know if this is interesting to you. And by all means, uh, have a listen. Go to... Uh, if he's covered a time period you're interested in, type in the name in the search engine. I promise you, there is a podcast dedicated to it. Um, go listen to it. Come back and tell me what you thought about it. I know that uh, I showed this book last week, like I already said. I mentioned the podcast, and uh, Kathy over at Grim Reader um, mentioned it as well. And she said she's going through these podcasts in a systematic way, starting at number one. And he's done over 300 when, when you add all the podcasts up on all the subjects. So she's, she's really going in in a sort of a, um, a, a super dedicated way. I do more of a pick and choose as I'm interested uh, sort of approach. Uh, either one, have a listen. Uh, sit down with someone that you're really interested in learning more about. If you are interested in learning any any anything more about someone in a in a philosophical tradition and and let me know what you think i'm really really fascinated to share peter adamson's name with you and to share his podcast with you um i just wanted to go a little bit more in depth about what history of philosophy without any gaps is all about um like i said these five books um, the ones I listed earlier, they are currently available from Oxford University Press. The volumes on the African diaspora and the Renaissance should be available sometime this year, I think. So those will be volumes six and seven. Um, he's going on to do um, probably, you know, Chinese philosophy, um, uh, philosophy of the Reformation, and those will bring us up through, you know, volumes 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, lots of lots of things to look for. Just as many things to look forward to as things that have already been posted. But uh, if you're interested in someone he hasn't talked about yet, be patient. He will get there. Uh, but it has taken him 10 years to get this far. But the amount of scholarship, the amount of learning... And, and just passion and insight that he's put into this, this project. It's, like I said, it's a labor of love, and I appreciate it, and it's available to the world for free. It's, uh, it's incredible. It's an incredible gift. Uh, so uh, take advantage of it, and if you do so, uh, please let me know what you thought. I will see you next week.